Lord, again, I'll say good morning to everyone. It's still morning, praise the Lord. Happy Sabbath, and I just want to thank God for giving us another Sabbath day um, in the pandemic, and we've been in a global pandemic for several months now, and this is something that everybody in the world is in, everybody in the world is going through this uh, experience. And uh, I was blessed, I got to hear a little bit of the uh, Sabbath school, uh, the ending parts of it, and I was confirmed, the spirit confirmed some of the thoughts that are gonna be shared in the message. And I will just uh, like to just share my screen here just to put up a picture before I continue. <clears throat> okay. So let me just do that. Let's see if you guys can see my screen. Okay. Can you all see that? <clears throat> Yeah. Yes. Okay. So let me try to, okay, there we go. So it's set up now. <clears throat> so the message is entitled uh, Operation Lightning Speed, Operation Lightning Speed. And before we get into the message, I would like to share an overview. Uh, we're going to pray. I'm going to pray. Don't worry. I'm definitely going to say a prayer. But before I pray, I would like to share an overview of what some may have heard of, some may not have heard of. And I want to ask a question. Who has heard of Operation Warp Speed? If you could maybe raise your hand in Zoom or put something in the chat yes or no, who has heard of Operation Warp Speed? Has anyone heard of that? Any yes, no, raise hand. Let's see, Is there anything in the chat? Nothing, nothing, no one? No, okay, I have no, I've heard of lightning speed, okay. Has anyone heard of Operation Warp Speed? All right, so we'll move on. I have not heard. Okay, so we'll move on. So <clears throat> just I want to share something about it. The aim of Operation Warp Speed, also known as OWS, which is the acronym, OWS, the aim of it is to begin, and I'm reading, I'm reading. This actually comes from the DHHS, the, uh, the Department of Health and Human Services, uh, the federal department. And it says here, uh, the aims, the aims, uh, or OWS aims to begin delivery of 300 million doses of a safe, effective vaccine for COVID-19 by January 2021. As part of a broader strategy to accelerate the development, manufacturing, and distribution of COVID-19 vaccines, therapeutics, and diagnostics. Collectively, collectively known as countermeasures. So I want to give a disclaimer before I pray. We're not going to be addressing vaccines today or even the pros or cons of Operation Warp Speed, okay? We can discuss that at another time. Feel free to reach out to me if you want to discuss about vaccines or if you want to talk about Operation Warp Speed. We're going to discuss something that's even more important. 
for us to see. Even more important, yes, I said it right. I said it right. Even more important than a COVID-19 vaccine. Now, that may be hard to believe, uh, especially if I was on the news right now, they would probably be shocked by that statement that there's actually something more important right now in the world than a vaccine for COVID-19. We're gonna be discussing Operation Lightning Speed. Operation Lightning Speed. And if this operation that we're gonna speak about, this operation is so important that we're gonna speak about that if it would have happened many years ago, there would have been no, there would have been no even thought of COVID-19. So please, please uh, be patient as we work through, as we understand what exactly is Operation Lightning Speed. So I'm gonna say a word of prayer. If you can bow with me, please. Father in heaven, Lord, we come before your throne of grace now boldly, just thanking you so much for your word. As was already mentioned, Elder Munjan mentioned how confused, how anxious, how much feeling, how many varying feelings and thoughts we have at this time in Earth's history in light of this global pandemic. We can see that your word has spoken about these things. We also can rest assured, as we will see today, I believe, that you have given us the solutions for the world. You've given us the answers, Lord. You have given us Operation Lightning Speed. And I pray, Father, that we will comprehend, that we will be convicted, that our hearts will be stirred, that we will clearly understand what it is that you have been trying, Lord, working, uh, doing for us. We pray, Father, that we can understand these things by faith, even the faith of Christ, I ask for forgiveness for our sins, and I pray, Father, that you will give us your righteousness by faith. And I ask that you will give us your Holy Spirit. Please make your word plain. And I ask for the word to be simple and understandable. And I pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I would like for us to please turn in the Bible to Ezekiel chapter 1. Ezekiel chapter 1, and we're going to read verse, starting from verse 11 through verse 16. Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 11 through 16. I see some comments coming about vaccines. We're not going to talk about vaccines today. But please, if you want to talk about vaccines, you can reach out to me at another time. We can discuss it by God's grace, and we can pray about it and consider it. We have something more important to talk about today than vaccine for COVID-19. Operation Lightning Speed is what our focus is going to be. In Ezekiel chapter 1, Verse 11 through 16, I'm going to read starting in verse 11. It says, Thus were their faces, and their wings were stretched upward. Two wings of every one were joined one to another, and two covered their bodies. Keep note of these wings here. We, we have wings. Those of us who are Bible, uh, students 
recognize and realize that wings signify speed. Wings signify speed. And we don't have time to dig all into that, but if you want some more insights in that, please reach out. Anything that I share at this time, um, and I don't give enough detail or enough Bible references, please take a note. You can reach out to me later and I will do my very best to supply all the references. For time's sake, we don't have, we don't have time to do that at this right now. But take note of wings. And it says, and they went everyone straight forward, straight forward, whither the spirit was to go, they went. And I heard in Sabbath school, uh, just to uh, put a plug here, I heard in Sabbath school at the end, uh, Brother Mokaj was speaking about the program of the Holy Spirit. That's what we need. We, we truly do. Um, and my heart was touched to hear that. And I believe that the Holy Ghost, and I've heard us say in the past, and uh, even Elder Munjin comes to mind, if we're not being led by the Holy Ghost, then we are not doing the will of God. We are not following the Lord. And it's key to recognize the Holy Spirit. And I will put this note out that the Holy Spirit will not Will, will never tell us or give us instruction to do anything that is not explicitly in the Word of God. So we can test the Spirit by the Word of God. We can try the Spirit by the Word of God. Period. And notice it says that these went forward whether the Spirit was to go they went and they turned not when they went they didn't turn to the right hand or the, or to the left they went forward they went forward we must go forward as a movement as was said in, at the end of sabbath school god is called a movement and it says even even in the pandemic as it was mentioned you know elder munden just mentioned and i heard it in sabbath school that we have to figure out how to move forward in the pandemic and the reality is this, the reality is this, what comes to mind is a statement, and I'm just going to read it because I have it pulled up here. Um, an author wrote, um, in 1885, an author wrote this in 1885 in a book called Testimonies for the Church, Volume 5, page 463. It says, the work which the church has failed to do in a time of peace and prosperity, she will have to do in a terrible crisis mm -hmm. under the most discouraging, forbidding circumstances. Okay. So uh, God has cautioned us and warned us that the work, we have to do it, no matter what is the circumstances, no matter how terrible, no matter how discouraging, no matter how forbidding, we must go forward, straight forward. And I'm continuing now in Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 13. It says, as for the likeness of the living creatures, their appearance was like burning coals of fire. And like the appearance of lamps. And it went up and down among the, the living creatures, and the fire was bright, and out of the fire went forth lightning. Verse 14, and the living creatures ran and returned as the appearance of a flash of lightning. Notice lightning is mentioned twice here. Fire is also mentioned twice. And these are very significant. We're going to touch on their significance as we continue studying. Just want to finish down to verse 16. Now as I behold, as I beheld the living creatures, behold, one 
one will upon the earth by the living creatures with his four faces. The appearance of the wheels and their work was like the color of a barrel. And they had one, and they four had one likeness. And their appearance and their work was as it were a wheel in the middle of a wheel. Now, we don't have time to break down everything, but we will break down a few things in these verses. Notice it says that the appearance was as a flash of lightning. Or you can say, in other words, the speed of lightning. And it says, uh, these we know are speaking about heavenly beings or angels. Um, this particular reference that it, or vision, I should say, that Ezekiel is having is in the same context, uh, on the same train of thought or vision, if you would, as Daniel uh, was, was having in chapter 7, verses 9 and 10, specifically. And I want to read that in Daniel chapter 7, verse 9 and 10, so we can get some more context. Notice what it says in Daniel 7, verses 9 and 10. It says, I beheld till thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit whose garment was white as snow and his hair and the hair of his head like pure wool and his throne like the fiery flame and his wheels burning what? Fire. And it says a fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousands, thousands, thousands ministered unto him and 10,000 times 10,000 stood before him. The judgment was set and the books were opened. So here we have the scene of the ending, or in other words, you can say the termination of the 2300 day Bible prophecy. And it says the books were open. This signifies the judgment, the investigative judgment that we've been studying as a church uh, in the afternoons, um, and we'll continue to study this afternoon. But notice in connection with this investigative judgment, we see fire. Fire is mentioned twice, and it says um, three times, fiery flame, burning fire, and a fiery stream. Okay, so this gives a setting or background very similar to what Ezekiel saw in his vision, where he saw in verse 13 that they were, uh, had like burning coals of fire. And also it says that fire, the fire was bright. And then he says again, out of the fire went lightning. So we can see that this is speaking about the same events in different ways, different angle, different perspective, different prophets, but it's the same uh, events that are being spoken about. And as I mentioned, this is speaking about the termination or end of the 2300 days. Now, the 2300 days is given or explained uh, in Daniel 8.14, because 2,200 days, you won't find that terminology directly in Daniel 7. But you do find it in Daniel 8, verse 14, where it says, And he said unto me, Unto 2,300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. Then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. Right? So we're building up to a point here. Please, stay with me. Cleanse. Now, many of us that are here are familiar with this. Some may not be. But this sanctuary work, the work of the sanctuary being cleansed, deals specifically 
and directly with the work that Christ is doing for us now in heaven. And he has been doing this work since the ending of the 2300 days or the termination of the 2300 days, which began in the year, as many of us know, 1844. And for more details, again, I encourage anyone who needs to know more, more details, please reach out to me afterwards. We just don't have time to cover everything. But I do want to speak about this cleansing work in brevity. This cleansing, you know, it's very interesting how we are very, right now in this crisis, this COVID crisis, um, a natural thing that we are focused on is uh, sanitation, uh, sanitation. We want to make sure the, che the chairs are clean. Everything has to be clean. Um, you know, we, we have to clean at the beginning. We have to clean at the end. Uh, make sure your hands are clean. Cleanliness, sanitation is one of the top priorities right now because of this public health crisis that we're currently facing. Very interesting object lesson. This is a similar priority for God in heaven. And it should be our priority as well in a spiritual sense. In a spiritual sense, we should have top priority, most the highest uh, level of in our mind should be sanitation of our lives, purity of our lives, to be clean in the sight of God, to have clean hands and a pure heart. This is the work of cleansing that God is seeking to do in his operation, lightning speed. Now, I want to go back to see clearly that this is done by the mighty power and the love of God displayed. Now, I want to go to a book that's not often referenced, but it has a powerful thought, has a powerful truth in it in light of this cleansing, in light of this fire that Ezekiel was speaking about and the fire that Daniel was speaking about. In the book of Song of Solomon, chapter 8, Song of Solomon, chapter 8, verse 6 and 7. I want to read something here. It says, in Song of Solomon, or Song of Songs, chapter 8, verse 6 and 7, it says, set me as a seal upon thy heart, as a seal upon thy arm. Very interesting, friends. Very interesting. So many thoughts came to mind. It says, for love is strong as death. Jealousy is cruel as the grave. Now, I want to qualify that jealousy because and even love needs to be qualified because both are, are not understood. This is speaking about the love of God, which we see displayed in his son and in God, the father. We see this love displayed in their character and God so loving the world that he gave his only begotten son to be one of us to live a life of purity, a life, a clean life, uh, uh, physically, temporally, and spiritually. Um, and, and this love was displayed in its fullest uh, sense on the cross of Calvary, how a, a innocent, a innocent um, a, a savior, one who was coming to actually save us, had to suffer even before the cross, 
had to suffer the weight and the burden of our sin, of our unrighteousness, of our wickedness, of our uncleanliness, of our, of our disease of sin. He had to take that upon himself. And he did. He did. He did. He bore all that. He bore all of our iniquities. And, and through this sacrifice, through this offering, we can be saved. We can be righteous. We can be holy. We can be pure. And, and he's making this available for us right now from and in the sanctuary in heaven. He's making this sacrifice, this offering, this righteousness, this purity available for us in the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary, which is located in heaven, not built with any man's hands or any plans of man. This is the plan of God. And we need to understand it. We need to believe it. We need to accept it so that we can receive the full benefits thereof, which will ultimately be us receiving the righteousness of Christ and being able to go home. And it says that the jealousy is cruel as the grave. This is God's holy, righteous jealousy, his love for us, that he doesn't want anything to come between us and him. And he is he is going to do um, he is going to do everything that he can in righteousness to make this a reality. By by I like to say it this way, by by any righteous means necessary. Because it's not by any means necessary, it's by any righteous means necessary. Because God can only do righteousness. He can't do anything that will be wrong or wicked, like the devil can do. And this is why the devil does things by any means mm -hmm. necessary. Even if it's sinful, even if it's wicked, um, destroying uh, someone, uh, destroying their character, their life, their family, you know, gossip and backbiting and um, to, to make a point, to see someone uh, uh, dealt with or, or, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, God doesn't operate that way. He only can do what needs to be done by righteousness and by holiness and purity. Now, continuing in this, uh, it says the coals thereof are coals of fire. Which have a which which hath a most vehement flame, okay? So here we start talking about the fire, the coals of fire, most vehement flame. This is the same thing that Ezekiel witnessed. This is the same thing that Daniel witnessed. This is something that we can witness. We should witness the love of God burning as a fire in our hearts and, and God's love burning uh, uh, for us and towards us, uh, seeking to purge out and burn out sin in our life, to cleanse that sin from our heart, to remove the dross in the tin, uh, the heat of the fire that God puts us through so that we can experience the fullness of his love and that we can reflect it as, as gold glistening uh, bright from the, the, the sun beaming upon it. That is what God wants to do for us, through us, uh, through this operation, lightning speed. All right? Now, this operation, lightning speed, is which I'm call, what I'm calling it, is represented by lightning. Um, and going back now to Ezekiel, uh, Ezekiel chapter 1, where we began, Ezekiel chapter 1, and verse 13 is where we were first introduced to lightning. It says at the end of the verse, 
in Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 13. At the end of the verse, it says, And went up and down among the living creatures, and the fire was bright, and out of the fire went forth lightning. Okay? And again, in verse 14, it says, And the living creatures ran. Okay? Running now. Okay? It's like the way it's being prepared. It's like the uh, idea is being established. It says, and the living creatures ran, signifying speed now. Okay? And it says, in return, as the appearance of a flash of lightning. Now, to our uh, knowledge, to our human knowledge right now in science, the speed of lightning is the standard for speed. Um, I, I came across a study where one time in history, we thought we had found something that was faster than the speed of light, but it found, we found out that it was a fault in the experiment that showed clearly that this was not faster than the speed of light. Um, so I don't have the exact calculations of the speed of light, but you can go find that on your own. But let me just say, it's very, very fast. The speed of light. This is what God is using to signify the work at the termination of the 2300 days, the work beginning in 1844. So, again, this is signified as well in Revelation 14, verse 6. John, another prophet now, we've seen Ezekiel, we've seen a Daniel. Uh, now we're going to look at John. And John, in the book of Revelation, verse chapter 14 and verse 6, again, this same lightning speed is signified in verse 6 of Revelation 14, and it says, And I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven. Flying. That is signifying speed. And it says, Having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. Now, as in the natural, so in the spiritual. As in the natural, so in the spiritual. I want to look at an object lesson from nature. Somebody put the approximate speed of light is 186,000, I think it said miles per second. Okay, thank you for sharing that. Praise the Lord. Very fast, all right? So, as in the natural, so in the spiritual. Okay? So, in other words, the same uh, speed, the same speed can be seen currently in God's creatures, right? This lightning speed, or let me say flying, if you would. And the same speed can be seen in all of the human uh, developments in our modern times, I can say, after the 2300 days. And we're going to look at that briefly, okay? Now, <clears throat> what, what are the, the fastest animals or living creatures in the world? Are they land animals? Are they sea creatures? Or are they air flying creatures? little little uh, trivia so I did a little research I'm not a scientist or um, uh, I don't do this research for a living but I see some answers coming through somebody said birds somebody said someone said cheetah land creature land cheetah 70 miles per hour okay all right very good 
observations. Let's look at something that I came across right in Wikipedia. And you can find it online, wikipedia.com. Uh, it says that the Peregrine Falcon, and I did do a few cross references to try to validate this. It says the Peregrine Falcon is uh, the fastest uh, aerial animal uh, and also the fastest animal in flight, uh, fastest bird, and the overall fastest member of the animal kingdom. It says the Paragu Paraguayan achieves its highest velocity, not in a horizontal level flight, but during its characteristic hunting stoop, when it goes down to hunt, when it, it's a bird of prey, so when it goes down to get its prey, it says, while stooping, the peregrine falcon soars to a great height, then dives steeply uh, at speeds over, this is what they say, 200 miles per hour. Okay. So you guys can go study that on your own. Go verify that. But what is recorded here is that this falcon reaches speeds over 200 miles per hour when it's going down, when it's stooping for its prey. Now, and looking at that from another view, another perspective, assuming the maximum size of this particular falcon, 240 plus uh, I got in the chat, assuming the maximum size of this falcon at 58 centimeters, it says its relative speed clocks at 186 body lengths per second during its hunting stoop. So what does that mean? In other words, that speed is the equivalent, that speed is the equivalent of a human running at 170, not miles per hour, not 170 miles per hour, but according to the math, okay, according to the math, it is 170 miles per second. Okay, so that is the equivalency, if you would. So apparently, um, this is a very fast bird, very fast bird. Um, it's not at the speed of light, but it is very fast flying. It flies very fast, okay? So we can see here clearly that uh, this bird is fast and it's believed to be the fastest animal or the fastest creature that God has created. Now, uh, going to another category of uh, nature, if you would, we can see that humans have also made some things. There are some things that are man-made that are in this world. And when we look at these man-made things, um, crafts, if you would, the fastest ones are ones that go in the air, not the ones on the land or in the sea. So in the air, we can see, uh, you can do your own research. I don't have time to go through all that. But when you look into man-made objects that have been invented or created, the fastest ones are the ones in the air. And it's not even close, according to uh, the data that was available to me. So the point is that when the Lord in Revelation 14, 6 signified this angel flying. He was trying to signify the speed at which this work, this operation, lightning speed, was to happen. Okay? So, <clears throat> continuing... I want to share um, a testimony. I want to share a testimony of an individual, a nurse, 
who is involved within, you can say, the realm of this um, back going back to the Operation Warp Speed. Now, this Operation Warp Speed is a, as I said, a uh, the aim is to develop a COVID-19 vaccine, and this is not um, only to this is not um, other nations in the world are also doing and involved in this uh, in, in a like fashion um, to try to quickly, as fast as possible, uh, develop a COVID-19 vaccine um, all around the world. And um, this is a testimony from a nurse, um, and this comes from the Associated Press. Uh, Associated Press, the article is called Vaccine Developed Under Operation Warp Speed is put to its biggest test, July 27th, 2020. And this is what the testimony of the nurse is. She says, I'm excited to be a part of something like this. It is huge, said Melissa Harding, a 36-year-old nurse who received an injection in Binghampton, New York, especially with family members in frontline jobs that could expose them to the virus, she added. During part, during, she says, quote, during our, during, doing our part to eradicate it is very important to me. Okay. So I resonate with Nurse Harding in Operation Lightning Speed. In other words, this is how I feel, and this is how I believe God's people should feel about Operation Lightning Speed. This is how God's people should feel about the cleansing of the sanctuary in which we are a part of that work. From, from here on earth, we are, we are working from our home here on earth, working from home. And Christ is working from his home in heaven. And he wants us to be able to come out and to come together that we may have a home together. He wants this Operation Lightning Speed to be accomplished as soon as possible. Now, we see here clearly that she's excited. Are we excited? Are we excited? Is it huge to us? Do we even know about it? Do we even know about the work of the investigative judgment? Do we, do we know about the message for these last days? Coming down to the end. <clears throat> it says this in Revelation chapter 10. In Revelation chapter 10, verses 5 through 7, it says this, and the angel, this angel is Christ. Okay, if anybody has a question about that, please, we can talk after. It says, and the angel which I saw stand upon the sea and upon the earth lifted up his hand to heaven and swear by him that liveth forever and ever, verse 6, who created heaven and the things that therein are, and the earth and the things that therein are, and the sea and the things which therein are, that there should be time no longer. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished, as he hath declared to his servants the prophets. So two points from these verses, time no longer means that we are not waiting for any more time, okay? We, God has put in operation lightning speed and he has a plan that he is trying to accomplish, which will give us his righteousness and it will accomplish the mystery of God, which is Christ in us. 
the hope of glory. So, if the Lord, if the Lord has put in operation lightning speed, and there is time no longer, then why hasn't it finished yet? Why hasn't Christ come yet? What's going on? What's the problem? Well, Ezekiel addresses that as well in chapter 2. Uh, the thing that hath been is, is that which shall be, and there's no new thing under the sun. That's, that's Ecclesiastes. That's not Ezekiel. But as we go back to Ezekiel chapter 2 now, we learn something. In Ezekiel chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. And I'm just going to read. It says, And he said unto me, Son of man, stand upon thy feet, and I will speak unto you. And the Spirit entered into me when he spake unto me, and set me upon my feet, that I heard him speak unto me. And he said unto me, Son of man, I send thee to the children of Israel, to a rebellious nation that have rebelled against me. They and their fathers have transgressed against me, even unto this very day. Even unto this very day. So the rebellion that existed in Israel at the time of Ezekiel, I declare unto you, is the same rebellion that is existing in the time of Israel, spiritual Israel today. The same rebellion, the same transgression. Transgression, he's speaking about the transgression of the law of God is happening to this very day. Looking back at a little bit of history, and this comes from, it was first recorded in 1884. This was first recorded in the year 1884, which is many years ago, over 100 years ago. It says, quoting from a book, Four Spiritual Gifts, Four, I'm sorry, uh, Spiritual Prophecy, Volume 4. Also, you can find it in The Great Controversy, uh, page 457. But it was first given in 1884. And notice what it says. It says, <clears throat> it says, if all who had labored unitedly in the work in 1844, 1844 is when the 2200 days terminated or ended that began the work of the investigative judgment, the work of cleansing of the sanctuary. It says, in 18, 1844, had received, had received the third angel's message and proclaimed it in the power of the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit, the Lord would have wrought mightily with their efforts a flood of light would have been shed upon the world years ago. Okay. The inhabitants of the earth would have been warned, the closing work completed, and Christ would have come for the redemption of his people. Okay. Light, a flood of light. Now, it's very interesting. You know, I've heard studies that um, sunlight destroys the coronavirus. You know, I don't know if anybody has heard that or not, but I've heard that. I've heard that light can uh, eradicate the virus in a matter of seconds, um, to my knowledge. And uh, anybody can look more into that. But the point is that this light, this righteousness, uh, this cleansing of the sanctuary, this work that Christ is trying to do from 
for us is calculated to 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 destroy sin in our lives to cause us to be able to love God and to love our neighbor as ourselves and to develop in our in our hearts that that hatred for sin this is the work that God is seeking to put in operation in our lives in a fast a quick manner okay and we see now that the rejection of this message the third angel's message calls calls and is causing the delay mm-hmm. it's causing the slowing down of the operation that God is trying to to speed up and and we know we can delay it because the, the Bible says it the, in the last words of Peter, um, Second Peter chapter three, and Peter's final words, he was encouraging us and telling us, and it was the message for the last days. That's the context of it. Talking about scoffers in the last days and how we have the privilege and the honor to not only look for Christ's second coming, but to also hasten it. In that same reverse manner, we can delay it. And we have delayed it through rebellion. Just like Israel delayed their getting into the promised land through rebellion. It was only supposed to be uh, a few days journey. But it took 40 years. You can do the math and see how many more times that is. It's a lot more times. And I didn't give you all the numbers. But I believe it was uh, 11 days. It was supposed to take. And it took 40 years. That is a tremendous um, uh, multiplication of time. So we see the same thing occurring today. We see the same delay of Operation Lightning Speed. God is ready and willing and able. And there have been people, there have been his people who have been ready and willing and able. But there is a work that needs to be done. There's a work that God wants to have done. And the work begins with us, as was mentioned already, as individuals. uh, Hearing God's voice, surrendering to Christ, surrendering our life to him, um, recognizing that he gave a son to die for us as individuals and accepting this sacrifice and, and turning from sin and, and, and accepting his righteousness. So for today, I want to close. And I want to share a statement in closing from uh, the year 1901, okay, which was still many years ago, um, over 100 years ago, 1901. Okay. And this, this, this reference here, um, is in the context of a letter that was written to a man named Percy McGann. Um, Percy McGann was a administrator. Um, he also became later a physician. Um, it was a school administrator. And uh, 1901, he, um, and also another in- individual named E.A. E. Sutherland, uh, re- relocated Battle Creek College relocated Battle Creek College to a rural location in harmony with with earlier councils that Ellen White gave. Um, They located this college to a farm. They moved it from Battle Creek, Michigan to a farm in Berean Springs, Michigan, which was 256 acres. Uh, They renamed the school the Emanuel Missionary College. This move, enable them to carry out some of the councils on education reform that Ellen White, uh, a, a, a messenger of God gave um, to help them move away from certain wrong methods of education, uh, classical education, and had it given them the opportunity to emphasize more biblical education and practical and uh, vocational 
uh, trainings. Now, this was very calculated because they went on to go do a work in the South as well. So God has the best plans. He knows how to uplift the downtrodden. He knows how to um, help those who are weak and feeble and to give what is needed for the times, okay? Remember, this is uh, the times when, you know, many were coming out of years of lifelong, uh, uh, you know, slavery, uh, not just the spiritual, but also the physical. So, you know, God was trying to do a work to prepare individuals for a second coming. And we're fighting against him. We're warring against him. You know, this work of McGann and Sutherland was made so much hard by criticism, even by ch church leaders at the time. But Ellen White encouraged them. She says, I cannot but feel assured that you have found the very place in which to begin your schoolwork. She wrote in a letter in 1901. But notice what she put in that letter. This is what I wanted to say. She put this in that letter. She says, we may, we may have to remain here. We may. Keyword is may. It's up to us, friends. Like we can, we can affect it. It says we may have to remain here in this world because of insubordination. Or in other words, you can say rebellion. Many more years as did the children of Israel. Okay, so the point, friends, is that God has an operation lightning speed. He wants to finish the work, to end the misery, to end the suffering, so that there will be no more pandemics, so there will be no more uh, losing of jobs, there will be no more rising in suicides. There will be no more rising in drug overdoses and so many things that are happening that, you know, it, we can't even really dwell upon because we would sink down into a deep depression as individuals. But God is suffering. He is going through pain, even in our pain, even even when we do things that we have caused in our own life, the suffering that we go through in it, God goes through it magnified. And he's tired. He wants, God, I believe God wants rest. You know, we, we need rest, but God also needs rest. And, and, you know, in a sense of the suffering that he's going through, God is long suffering, we know not willing that any should perish. And, you know, God wants to bring Operation Lightning Speed to fruition and to an end. Let us cooperate with him, please. As the church is preparing for evangelism plans, let us prepare to do evangelism. Let us figure out how to serve, how to work, how to labor. Uh, we need an education. We need a proper education. We need a training. Um, in various lines, um, you know, I was talking to somebody about, um, you know, f financial uh, management. Um, and, 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 you know, there's so much work to be done. There's so much uh, labor to be done for soul um, in so many different ways that we, we can't narrow the work down. But the key is that God has the plans and we need to study. We must study. We have to read. We have to read the Bible diligently. And we need to read the testimony of Jesus Christ, according to Revelation 12, 17. Because that is connected with the church in these last days, inseparable. It's given for us as a gift. So, we, so that we become behind and no gifts. Uh, you know, as we prepare and get ready for the second coming of Christ. So my appeal, friends, is to please, Allow Christ to work and learn and get involved with Operation Lightning Speed so that Christ can come soon and we can be, we can be healed and delivered. So all who wants to be a part of Operation Lightning Speed, I would ask that you would say amen, raise your hand. Um, anyone who wants to know more about it, who wants to know more about this operation, 
of God. Please feel free to amen. reach out to myself. Amen. 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 Brother Marable, amen. 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 Anybody who wants to know more, reach out to myself, any of the elders, um, any of the leaders in the church. Um, God has a plan. Um, it has been long delayed, and we can do our part to hasten it. Amen. So I'll close with that. Praise God. <clears throat> Amen, brother, for that timely, very timely message. Um, Operation Lightning Speed. And as you were talking about that, I was just thinking, because God has a work for all of us to do in our own little communities. And I was just, I'm just praying that the Lord would use my wife and I in our area of responsibility, because if we all work that area's responsibility as we should, Christ would be here. So help us not to be that delay. So thank you, Elder Reichert. And you did mention, as a matter of fact, you talking about the investigative judgment, and that was failed to be met to uh, was uh, failed to uh, we failed to mention that earlier today at five o'clock, five p.m. Uh, Pastor Anthony Burrell, and he's been a, a serious blessing to our church in um, preaching this uh, or teaching this um, message about the investigative uh, judgment. But he will be teaching again today at five o'clock. So uh, we would like to encourage you to even, it's piggybacking on this, piggybacking, piggybacking off this message here for today. Um, so just remember that. And then also remember our baptism for uh, next week, next week's Sabbath. Uh, we encourage all those who are able to come out and support uh, members there. And it's gonna be held at the Burnt Mill Seminary Adventist Church. Also, there was a message asking about the health fair and the health fair, that information, uh, uh, the full information, um, it's not, uh, we're still working on it. We, what we did was we divided up into four separate groups, which was, um, which is the, the program committee, uh, the logistics committee, the food committee, and we have a, uh, a advertising committee, advertising committee. And so we're all meeting now in our respective groups, putting those programs together and then we're going to come back. So, um, we have some, uh, some suggested um, times, but it's, nothing is, is concrete yet. So we will get you all that information once we, we, we're more uh, sure on the time. But we know that we would like for it to be on the uh, this last Sunday of September. With that said, I'm gonna ask Elder Reichert if he can close us out with a word of prayer. Amen. Okay, yes, let's pray. <clears throat> Father in heaven, Lord, we come before your throne of grace again, thanking you so much for the work you're doing for us in our lives and how you're sustaining us in this pandemic, how you're providing, um, even helping us endure any challenges that we're facing, whether with health, whether with finances, whether with uh, any social ills, Lord. Um, we uh, just pray that you will strengthen us, that we will I recognize that you are you still care and that you are still uh, working uh, and, and, and seeking to enlist us and, and enlist our cooperation in working with you father um, and, and seeking to save lives physical and spiritual um, Lord we pray for your workers your laborers in all areas uh, whether uh, medical whether uh, government, whether uh, any any line, Lord, of, of service that you have your people in, uh, we pray that you will use each one um, and help them to grow, um, to bear forth fruit, to figure out ways and means to uh, carry your work forward. Lord, no matter what is our calling, our life work, may we uh, uh, realize that we are involved in this operation, that you are uh, seeking to 
accomplish or you have a plan. Your plan has been established for many years, even before uh, there was sin. As soon as there was sin, there was a savior, Father. You had a plan long ago. And we just pray that we will learn it, that we will study it, uh, that we will examine it, observe it, Lord. Please help us, like, help us to be diligent in that, not slothful, but uh, to be fervent in spirit in this, Lord, serving you. Um, and, and, and realize, like Christ did at the age of 12, he said, wish ye not that I must be about my father's business at the age of 12. Lord, we pray that you will please inspire young people, that they will see that now that they can serve you, and you can give them gifts, or even as you did to your servant at the age of 17. Lord, please, Lord, help us. Help us to see the calling that we have. And we pray that we will surrender and submit so you can finish your work in these last days. And we pray all these things and we ask them in Jesus' holy name. Amen.